Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to another quick lecture and this time I'm going to talk about computer-guided implant surgery or CGI and I wanted to share with you how this process really works. What are the different steps and tools and instruments and what you need to know so you can place implants in a computer-guided way. Now together with my team I really enjoy placing dental implants and performing the surgery and all sorts of implant related procedures, but I also focus on surgical photography. I document every case step by step and by now I created a, a rather big database of documented surgical cases that was very valuable to me in my own learning curve, in my own education, so I can get better at what I do. Now over the years, uh, many other doctors, uh, it was valuable to them as well as I was teaching and sharing the data. So together we're learning how to get better at what we do and place implants properly. Now in this world, at least in my opinion, there are two types of implant patients. One type is a patient that has straight implants, well positioned, well restored with no problems. And another group that has crooked implants or malpositioned implants and we all know that this can lead to many problems and complications in the future because placing implants is sometimes tricky and especially when you're dealing with the aesthetic zone you have to be at a safe distance from the adjacent roots and the anatomy and have the implants pretty much placed perfectly so you get a great aesthetic result. Now that's not always that easy and there is a learning curve, there is a path and I believe that placing implants optimally should be done in a computer guided fashion. And throughout the process there are different steps that you need to take and learn and get better so your implants eventually are well positioned. Now in the future I will share with you these steps in great detail so you can also benefit from this technique. Now in today's presentation I'm going to talk about the different steps and how it works and I feel that if you incorporate computer-guided surgery in your practice you have tremendous opportunities. Uh, number one, your procedures will be more minimally invasive and safer for your patients because you'll be more accurate and more precise in your placement and you'll get much better surgical and aesthetic results and help your patients that are missing teeth. Now you'll find out also that in the process you will grow your practice. Your case acceptance will be increased, uh, patients will be impressed and they will definitely move forward with procedures much easier than before. And in addition to that you'll also enjoy the process. It's a lot of fun to play, place implants in, in this way. So I hope you enjoy this. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about the different steps. So we all talk about the same thing and use the same language. And when you get to more difficult cases, more complex situations, you will know more and you'll be able to handle them properly. So for, for this patient, um, this patient presented with a draining fistula on the lingual aspect of teeth number 20 and 19. And in order to trace the infection, I placed a good aperture point and performed a, a periapical radiograph, and that led me to tooth number 19. And indeed, when I reflected the flap, I noticed a vertical root fracture on the mesial root, and therefore the tooth needed to be extracted, the socket was grafted, and I left it to heal for about three months. After three months, the healing was uh, you know, very good, and we had enough attached and keratinized tissue, what seems to, to, to be like a great implant site. So the first thing that I did, I created a diagnostic wax up. I wanted to know what would be the uh, shape and size of the final restoration. And that also helped me in regards to planning the implant positioning. And my plan was to have a screw axis position. So I would encourage you as uh, a first step, learn about implant positioning. Learn about where you want those implants to be before you learn about the technique. Because that's very important. You need to know what, where you ultimately would like those implants to be positioned. 
So what I did, I created two types of casts, one of the current condition without the tooth, one with the um, wax up, with the uh, blueprint where this tooth is going to be and look like. And what I did with the casts, I optically scanned them. So now from actual casts, they're turning into virtual casts, basically a three-dimensional virtual model that I can now use for planning purposes. Now the format of those files is called STL, which is the acceptable format for uh, a 3D model, not just in the dental industry, in any industry that uh, deals with this type of uh, virtual planning and manufacturing. So we have an optical scan of the cast with and without the wax up, and now we refer the patient for a CT scan. Now since there are common mutual points, the scan of the wax up and the models can be merged with the CT scan. And now it will allow us to plan the case when we have all the anatomical information, but also restorative information. So the important step of merging is absolutely necessary where we merge the STL files, those virtual 3D models, with the DICOM files, which are the CT scan files. And now we get basically a virtual patient in our virtual surgery software. So the next thing that we'll need to do is study the implant site. We need to learn about the anatomy. In this particular case, we'll mark the inferior alveolar nerve. And we'll start studying the, the site uh, in all the dimensions. We'll look at it in the buccolingual dimension. We, we can see that this is a pretty wide ridge. And also mesiodistal. So we'll start uh, positioning the implant virtually, what I call a simulation, in a way that is number one, safe, that is far away from the nerve and the adjacent roots, but also proper in a restorative way. So we have a trajectory that uh, allows you to restore the, the case with a screw axis uh, restoration. So you need to be able to perform the simulation. And once you have the implant positioned in, in the place that you want it to be, the next step is literally to press print. We're now ordering a surgical guide that will replicate what we did virtually in the patient's mouth. So this guide needs to be very well fitted, has to, be a, have, has to have a definitive seat, and has a sleeve or tube through which the surgery will be performed. And that's what I wanted to uh, share with you today. You also need to get a surgical plan. I call this a recipe. And the, the plan will include the different drills to be used and also the sequence and you need to follow it step by step because right now uh, we are trying to replicate what we did virtually with our simulation clinically in the patient's mouth. So you need to make sure that you're getting not just a surgical guide, but also the surgical plan. Okay, these both are very, very important. Now, depending on the implant system that you're using, uh, there are a lot of new tools and new different types of burrs, usually longer types of burrs with stoppers. And that can get confusing. Now, if you look at your plan, at your recipe, and that's why I asked my assistant, Jose, to do before the surgery, he lays out all the different instruments and the different burrs in a sequence. So when the time comes to perform the procedure, it just has to follow the sequence. So be very well prepared. and Prepare everything on the surgical tray in the proper sequence. Okay, That will make the procedure go much smoother. Now we're looking at the implant site. Um, we, we're actually seeing a lot of attaching keratinized tissue. So you have the option to choose a flapless approach using a punch. And for this system, the punch is connected to a drill. So what we'll do, we'll place the surgical guide in the patient's mouth, make sure it's well seated, and use the punch drill through the tube. And that will take just a minute to create a little circular incision with the punch that you can remove either with an Orban knife or with a curette, now you'll have access to the bone to complete your osteotomy. What you'll do next, you'll follow your recipe. You'll use the different drills. Uh, some systems use keys, some are keyless. This system has one key that allows you to place uh, a two millimeter twist drill. So the key is placed inside the tube definitively and the drill is going through the key. And again, this replicates the position of the implant that you planned in your software. 
So what you do next, you follow your recipe, you follow the different sequence of drills. Uh, again, going through the tube, and I recommend you place a direction indicator at some point to make sure that you have the proper trajectory. You, you, you know, in, in, my, in this case, we're placing a safety floss just in case it gets uh, dislodged so we have uh, access to it. So the direction indicator, I recommend you take a verification x-ray to make sure that you still have the right position, that the plan was proper, and that's just routine for safety. Once you, you ensure that this is um, the right position, you can complete the drilling sequence, again, through the tube. Until you reach the final imprint position, you can take a few more x-rays uh, during the process if you like to. And once the position of the, the osteotomy is completed, the time comes to place the implant. What you'll notice is that when you have computer-guided implant positioning placement, you need to use some type of implant mount. That's part of the surgical kit. So this mount will be connected to the implant, and you'll use an implant carrier to carry the implant through the mount and place it straight through the guide. So this type of implant placement is called fully guided. A fully guided implant placement, meaning we are creating the osteotomy, we're creating the uh, place for the implant through the guide, but we're also placing the implant through the guide as well. And that's also important in soft bone. It can happen occasionally, you prepare the perfect osteotomy, and then you place the implant and it can change and it can, it can find another way. So this verifies that you're really following the osteotomy and placing it properly. And again, you need to use a fixture mount. Uh, at the end, the end of the procedure, I placed a healing abutment. The torque values were uh, very adequate. There was good initial stability and I connected a healing abutment that is called the ENCODE, and that allows also the optical scanning for the restorative dentist to complete the case eventually. And here we see the uh, part of the process from the tooth extraction, the computer-guided implant placement, and eventually the implant positioning. So um, in this process, uh, you notice there are four different steps that were very important. Uh, initially, we decided where we would like the implant to be on the diagnostic wax up and eventually the vir virtual wax up. Uh, I studied the implant side, I studied the anatomy, the different dimensions of bone, the thickness and the quality, and also the um, position of the nerve. I then simulated the implant position and I tried a couple of options until I, I got the right, the proper 3D positioning and the right trajectory for a screw axis. And eventually noticed that the procedure was relatively uncomplicated, simple, quick, and the healing was great. And that is really my experience with computer-guided surgery. I find that uh, I'm more accurate and precise. My procedures are quicker, faster. My patients are healing better. And also my practice has grown. My patients' uh, case acceptance uh, has been um, much improved. And uh, I really enjoy uh, performing this type of procedure. And I also enjoy teaching it. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope this was helpful and valuable to you. And if you'd like to hear some more interesting presentations and uh, be in contact, uh, go to surgicalmaster.com and I look forward to working with you in the future.